How to build the Blackgate's twin steam engine, part 3, the job begins. For me, it's a very good day. Mainly because it's the 5th of January 2019. And I'm pleased to say that I've reached 66 years old and most of my bits still work. And talking about bits, here are some in a green box. These are not bits that have fallen off me, these are parts for the Blackgate's twin steam engine that I'm building. In this clip I'm just test fitting the gland nut into the gland on the lower cylinder cover and everything looks fine. I've just had a thought, when I said it was the 5th of January 2019, this may confuse some people who are not my Patreon supporters, because it probably won't be public on YouTube for at least another two months. I hope that clears it up. Anyway, on with the job. Here are some parts that have escaped from the box because the parts I'm going to be using very shortly. The first thing to do is a slight amount of deburring. And what I normally do is put a piece of silicone rubber tubing around a drill bit and it makes it much easier to handle. As well as lowering the risk of personal injury if the drill bit suddenly stops. I don't think you'd get a serious injury from a drill bit and you probably only notice it when blood appeared on the bench. These castings are quite well finished. The only parts that I'm deburring currently are the holes where the trunnion pins fit. The trunnion pins are the shafts that go from the cylinder through the port face to a spring with a nut and a washer at the far end. This spring holds the cylinder firmly against the port face. I've loosely screwed the trunnion pin into the cylinder and now I'm trying to fit it through the standard but it's not going. And what you mustn't do is force it through. The reason it's not going through the hole and I checked the hole with a 1 8 of an inch diameter reamer is because on the threaded part of the trunnion pins is a very very slight burr. You can't see it with the naked eye. I can't even see it with my glasses on. Where am I? Oh yes, I'm in the workshop. One of the best things that I bought last year was this. It's called a Proxon Minimot and I also bought the stand so I could clamp it on the bench. I fitted one of the trunnion pins into the chuck and I'm spinning it at not too high a speed, just fairly fast and I've just used the edge of a needle file to remove this tiny burr. Then I reversed the part in the chuck and repeated exactly the same process at the other end. It's difficult to see exactly what I'm doing, I'm using the corner of the needle file just to get rid of the burr where the thread ends and the shaft continues. I did the same thing to the same area of every one of the trunnion pins. So now I know that all of the trunnion pins are going to go into the holes. Anticipating the same problem with the connecting rods, I did the same to those as well. I think you can see that the difference is obvious, watch this. The 1 8 of an inch diameter shaft fits perfectly in the 1 8 of an inch diameter reamed hole. Now every one of the trunnion pins is a really smooth fit into the hole in the standard and also the connecting rods are a great fit in the gland nuts. So am I being a bit too picky with this job? No, definitely not. However small the burrs on the shafts are, if they can't be fitted smoothly into the bearing surfaces then what's going to happen is the burr is going to scratch the bearing. Little jobs like this are very necessary and they're all part of the main job which is called fitting. And this is called fettling, power assisted fettling. I've taken the Proxon motor tool out of the holder and now I'm using a grinder to clean up the casting. The amount of flashing or sprue or whatever you call it on the castings wasn't too bad but I needed to smooth it out a little bit. If you're building one of these and you intend to paint the cylinders, it's a good idea to do this just so the paint job looks good. If you're going to clad the cylinders, you don't have to do it quite as much as this, you can leave the middle part out of it. But if you do decide to clad the cylinders in either mahogany or wood, you will need to smooth out the edge of the casting, but be very careful not to touch the machine part. And if you're using one of these grinding wheels, this is not a particularly coarse grinding wheel, but these Proxon motor tools are very powerful, so be careful you don't remove too much metal from the casting. After using a grinding wheel for the initial fettling of the casting, I then changed it for a flapper wheel, and this is much more gentle. Needless to say, eye protection should be worn, and also a breathing mask is a good idea because the particles coming off this casting are very small. 
A while back, a viewer sent me some of these, and they're really clever. It's a fancy holder which spins these paper sanding discs, and you have a very fine degree of control using them. I think that dentists probably use these. I went back to using the grinder for one of the other cylinders, and if you look at my fingers, you can see the very fine metal particles and why you would need to wear a breathing mask if you were close by these. This is the last of the cylinders to be fettled or cleaned up, after which I will start to prepare the cylinder for painting. So here's the story so far. The engine is just sat on the piece of brass, all very loosely assembled. It's all systems go for the next episode, where I will be cutting the base to size, cleaning up the main pedestal castings, plugging the redundant holes in the valve ports, and assembling the cylinders. That's about it for this episode. Now I'm going to do some birthday type things, which means I'm going back into the workshop. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.